Hi, I'm Nate, and this is Photo Learningism. I know that we've done titles in Caden Live before. We're just playing with the principle of mapping this within 3D space, but we haven't really gone that deep. What about fly through effects with text? What about motion compositing in 3D space with shadows? Interested? Let's check it out. So once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time here, thank you very much. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them. Thank you so much. So we're getting back into Kden Live. It is a fantastic free open source tool for working on videos and really a lot of different things, um, even into audio. I've uh, done a lot of videos on that. I'll put up a playlist uh, over there if you're curious to check out more. But for tonight, I really want to dig back into the text effects because this is becoming such an impressive area of video content creation, of doing creative things with text. So I wanted to look at that with you tonight and just kind of explore the different options that you can do and maybe inspire a bit more from here just to kind of show you how to use these effects creatively. So if you haven't seen the effects video, by the way, 4K in live, I'm going to put a card up, go check that out and watch how the effects interface works and especially how keyframes work so you can be familiar with how those controls work. Knowing that, I'm going to quickly just show over here in the effects tab I'm finding a lot more things in this main effects list than when I dig into the video or, or audio specific ones. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe I'm just missing something, but I seem to find a lot more in the main list that disappear in these other ones. Uh, so stick with that one. Uh, that seems to be a good uh, primary source to find everything I'm going to show you today uh, from where I got the effects. All right. So down below here, I have just a basic layout. I am using a title and I'm using a background. It's some footage that I shot uh, once upon a time actually to check out a uh, camera stabilizer piece of equipment, uh, which is also another interesting video. You should go check that out as well. Uh, having said that, yeah, that's the background layer of just me testing out, walking with a stabilizer and trying this thing. Next thing is the text layer, which I wanted to try to get this fly through effect and I believe succeeded in doing it. So just to break down very basically how this works, there is an effect called position and zoom, <laughs> which does something very similar to transform, but I'll explain what the subtle distinction is and why this works and the other ones don't. Uh, first off, what you'll have to do is you have to create a title. That's very simply done by right clicking in your project bin and adding a uh, title. I made this one. And what makes this one special is that I actually put a background on it. This is black. Um, the starting position will always be black, by the way. But the starting position of this, and this is transparency, is at zero, meaning it's fully transparent. I turn that all the way up so it actually has a solid background. You could change the background if you want. I just like the drama of it, and that's what I have. So it's a black background, now that we understand that. I applied a simple chroma effect to get rid of the color of the text. So now we can see through it and we have the layer behind it. So then the last piece of it was just doing this position and zoom effect, which works in a different way. Now transform, what it will do is it actually will attempt to scale what you're working on on a rasterization basis, which means that it attempts to resample it as you're working with it. That maxes out at a certain point, and it's before you fill the screen with, with your text, and that doesn't quite work because we have to have the effect of actually going all the way into it. So transform does not work. I tried another concept of making the title a very high font, a very high point uh, value, and that didn't work either because when I was trying to move forwards and backwards, I just couldn't get that to apply properly from the distance I wanted and then fill it up the way I wanted. So what I found did do the uh, the trick was this, this other effect, which I've never used before because it looks very similar to transform, position and zoom. It has one subtle difference though. If we look at it over here, 
it has a size property which is different from the other effects. What I actually believe this is doing in this case is instead of resampling, it is actually uh, rescaling based on the properties of what you're working with. In this case, I believe it's actually maintaining the text typeface properties because it looks very clean. Even as I get bigger and bigger into it, it does not tear, it does not pixelate at all. So that's how you can achieve this effect. Simple keyframing process, start where you are, and like a transform, you just have to reposition the screen so that you actually end up inside one of the pieces, uh, one of the, the text characters, uh, which fills the screen. That's how the effect is achieved here and how you can fly through into the text. All right, so the next thing I wanted to look at here is a little bit of perspective bending. I had simulated a concept about this previously, trying to work with, uh, again, some of the transform properties and using actually some of the VR ones because that's simulating based on mapping to a sphere, which kind of worked, but this is the rest of the puzzle. It's using an effect called corners. And this is keyframable, obviously, and you can move within perspective, which is what makes it so neat. You could do this numerically, although I find these values a little confusing to translate. So instead what you would do, I'm just gonna pull out here a little bit, is you would literally click and drag the corners, the points, and you can do that to draw out perspective. As you move them, it actually changes the perspective of the object you're manipulating. You can do this with video. You can do this with text and images. It, it really applies to any kinds of media that I bring into here. Uh, so that is how you can do uh, perspective and, and moving in kind of a pseudo 3D space. It also allows inversion. So you could go all the way around and backwards and back again. Uh, it, it does allow for you to do that a little bit more creatively than what I had found previously. This effect is a lot more friendly to that approach of doing composite in pseudo 3D space. So the effect is corners, and you can see that working where it moves in front of you almost. I could have made this more extreme to, to the extent that it would come right up in front of you. So you kind of get this idea of it moving kind of like that. Um, you, you really have a lot of flexibility with this, this uh, effect filter. So encourage you to try that. If you're looking for a little bit more guidance on that, uh, check out the uh, video I did on lightsaber drawing because it talks about using this effect in more detail. All right, and the last piece of this, this is really cool. It's not perfect because this is hard, uh, but this is a way to do it in case you're looking to get it done in Kden Live. It just takes patience and using a lot of different things. <laughs> so starting with this thing, Essentially, what we're doing is a couple different things. We're attempting to have text with perspective, pretending like it's actually in the shot, and then simulating some shadow to kind of marry it into the, the conditions of where you are to simulate that it actually is blocking light and having an effect on its environment. So this is the video of what I did as my test here. Again, this is not perfect at all. There's some, uh, some trouble with trying to get things moving the way I want them, but this is the idea where you can see how it more or less can stay in a range of space, some tightening up to do uh, that takes time, that takes a lot of refining along the way, but it's possible and that's the cool part. So you have this piece here and then you also have the shadow, which is a lot more subtle down here. It moves a lot more than I'd like. I'll show you why that just again takes more patience to get into the perfect movement. You have to match it to the movement of the camera, which gets tricky, uh, but it can be done. Um, and here's how. Let's do it. So three different layers here. The background is again, obviously the pan shot. The second one is another title. And this one is just doing again, um, uh, some simple things. It has the corners effect that I mentioned. Um, I'm also using a transform alongside of that. As long as the corner perspective does not extend beyond your, your frame of viewing, you can use a transform to actually move the corner, the perspective within that shot. If you try to do it, if it reaches outside of it, it does some weird clipping. Uh, so as long as what you're manipulating is there, you can use a transform to make it a little easier on yourself to complement the perspective and move that in 3D, pseudo 3D space. Uh, so that's what's going on here on this layer is that we have that corners effect doing the perspective movement 
and then we have a transform to give us a little bit of correction along the way, which could be better, admittedly, um, but that's how I'm achieving that. All right, the next piece of this gets really complicated because trying to do a shadow is, is hard. Um, <laughs> we're borrowing the same title and I'll start at the top of the stack here. So the first thing I did was a transparency effect. And that's a little bit important because a shadow is trans transparent. It's, it's something that, unless it's a <laughs> very starkly lit by something, it's going to have a little bit of transparency to it um, to absorb the color and the texture that's around it, through it, behind it, however you want to look at that in the dimensional space. Um, it needs some transparency. So that was part one. Part two was giving it um, a little bit of blur because unless, again, the light is very sharp on it, there's going to be a little bit of blurredness to it um, just because the light is refracting and bouncing and it's not a sharp edge, okay? Even though light travels in a straight line, it does bounce off just about everything. All right, contrast, and this goes hand in hand with also the brightness. There's no brightness and contrast. You have to do them separately, but this is kind of how you take the title, which is blue to start, and then kind of desaturate it down, but not really. It's the same idea. You're just using brightness and contrast to do the same thing and match it up with the shadow that you're trying to blend it in with. So that's kind of the theory behind brightness and contrast and that those are very easy to control. You could keyframe them if you want to. If the light is changing um, in your shot, that's a possibility. I did not have that problem here, <laughs> which I'm grateful because I had enough challenges as it was. Uh, so that's the next piece of this. The next item down are corners. Again, this is uh, trying to do some of the perspective correction. That's how I was trying to achieve that here. And it could be done. It can be done. It just it takes the patience and the time to do it, to marry it up with the motion of the shot. The last piece of this is a mask uh, because part of this has uh, some depth to it. And you can see how it kind of runs off the, the, the railing here a little bit. And I didn't want that to continue off there. I am using a mask. To, to chop off that and match uh, the line of this this railing so that it does not appear and it doesn't uh, carry beyond that point because otherwise that just wouldn't look real. You'd have a shadow floating where there would be no object to bounce, to, to catch the shadow. Um, so that's what the mask is for. I did have to play with it a little bit in this case. I noticed uh, where I had to change the alpha operation to minimum. Um, that's something I found out I also had to do with corners if you watch that video. And I had to invert it. I'm not sure why, but in this case, I had to invert it to get it to work. Um, and it has to be the bottom of the stack, by the way. I believe it's processing in order, and the mask has to be the last thing in effect um, really after the corners because that's what it's applying with. All right. And that's really the idea. And with that, you can actually start to include really fancy type titles that can match and somewhat interact, even affect your shot a little bit, their environment. So I just thought that was really cool. It, it's definitely something that warrants further testing and exploration. And I really hope you'll go take this baton and try this out and pl apply it to your own projects and things to give it a little bit more life and depth and um, enhance your storytelling ability. So that's that. Again, the tool is Caden Live, free, open source. I'll put a link in the description below so you can find that and easily download it and try it out. You lose nothing by doing that because, again, it is free. It is rapidly updated by a fantastic group of developers, the KDE Group. Those guys are wonderful. They keep this product going really at um, no obligation to, just out of the, uh, the interest of the content. Um, so thank you, KDE, KDE Group, for your efforts on this. And uh, I sincerely hope that uh, everyone watching this takes the opportunity to at least try this out. Uh, we have many, many videos uh, demonstrating the power of this tool, so it's worthwhile even if you just try it out for curiosity's sake. All right, this has been Photo Learningism, and I'm Nate, and I thank you so much for spending your time with me. Give me a thumbs up if this was useful to you. Consider subscribing if you haven't done that already, and leave a comment ask a question and not just for me, for me, but for the whole community of learners that are joined in this effort of sharing experiences and making each other stronger. Thank you again. I will see you at the next video.